Good evening and welcome to the Board of Education's public hearing on the Linganore Oakdale Urbana redistricting. I'm Terry Alvin, I'm superintendent of the school system and what some of you may not realize is that means I am also the secretary treasurer for the Board of Education. Our Board of Education president and vice president are both out of town tonight and so it fell to me to run the meeting. But I do want to make sure that everyone understands this is a hearing for the Board of Education. You have seen the recommendation of the superintendent and staff. However, this is the opportunity for the board to hear your feedback on that recommendation. So while I am kind of leading the meeting, it is the board's meeting and they are very interested in hearing the feedback that you have to share this evening. I'm gonna ask Mr. Lebo to just share a brief comment with you, and then we will begin calling for our speakers. Good evening. The Board of Education seeks public comment on the superintendent's recommended attendance area for the Linganore Oakdale Urbana redistricting study. The recommendation was presented to the Board of Education at their September 11th, 2019 meeting. Staff was charged by the Board of Education in November of 2018 to conduct a redistricting study to establish the attendance areas for two new elementary schools, Sugarloaf and Blue Heron, and to balance enrollments in the study area. There are 10 elementary, five middle, and three high schools included in this redistricting study area. Guidance throughout the project is provided by Board of Education Policy 200, School Attendance Areas and Redistricting, and FCPS Regulation 200-2, Redistricting. Goals as outlined in the Board of Education Strategic Plan also served as direction to staff with regards to community engagement and preparation of the recommendation. In the development of the recommendation, staff held three sets of public meetings to discuss the project and gather feedback from the community. The first round of public meetings was held in January 2019 to introduce the study, scope of work, methodology, and schedule. Second round of meetings were held in March and staff presented several concepts for discussion and feedback. The third round of meetings were held in June of 2019 at the three high schools in the redistricting study area. Those who attended the meeting or watched later on the website heard a presentation of two options that staff were considering. Attendees were asked to provide feedback about what they liked and disliked about each option, and the community was asked to consider the relative importance of the factors included in board policy 200 as they provided feedback for the study. The superintendent's recommendation is the next step in the redistricting study process and is a further refinement of the options that were presented in June. The next steps, the board will hold an additional public hearing next week, September the 24th at Oakdale High School. That public hearing is also scheduled for 7 to 9 p.m. with sign up for speakers to begin at 6.30. The Board of Education will discuss the redistricting at their September 25th regular Board of Education meeting and is scheduled to decide the redistricting boundaries on October the 16th. The new attendance boundaries will be implemented over two full years, fall, excuse me, over two years in the fall of 2020 and the fall of 2021 to align with the opening of Sugarloaf and Blue Heron Elementary Schools. Maps and detailed information continues to be available on the FCPS website. So tonight at the public hearing, the board will just be listening. They will not be responding to any questions. Individual speakers will be allotted up to three minutes and a speaker may not yield his or her time to another individual. I'm gonna call three names so that the first person can up and come up and begin speaking and the other two folks can kind of get themselves in position to be ready to follow after that individual. So our first speaker this evening will be Rachel Engler, followed by Isabella Engler and Michael Blum. <clears throat> Good evening, members of the board. I'm Rachel Engler, and my daughter attends Trin Ridge Elementary School. <clears throat> I'm here to speak with you about the redistricting recommendation um, offered by Dr. Albin. I know that Twin Ridge has not had a huge presence in previous meetings, and the reason is because the one model that we did not want was quickly dis disregarded, and the two other options were acceptable that for all of us concerned. I know and understand this is a very difficult decision, and at no point are you going to make everyone happy unless you make no changes at all. And well, we know that's not gonna happen. I personally agree, with, agree that both schools are top notch, but I'm not questioning the quality of education that my child's gonna receive, but the ability for her to continue to thrive knowing she has a strong support group around her. 
I've personally watched and participated in the online surveys, and at no time did I see my neighborhood, which is the small notch out that was made off of Bartholow's Road, um, included in any study that showed us going to anything other than Windsor Knowles High School, or Windsor Knowles Middle School on Tenthingenor High School. Had those been options to us previously, we would have probably spoken out a lot earlier. Um, we purchased our house on Old Bartholow's in 1997, and ever since then, we've always been in the feeder program, going to Windsor Knowles and then off to Linganore. According to the blocks and boundaries set forth, this change will affect approximately 68 students in my neighborhood, which is approximately two students per class, split between three grade levels. This change is due to the fact that according to the blocks, the brand new neighborhood of Lansdale houses 52 of those students. If you took that brand new neighborhood and move them to Newmarket Middle School, then my well-established neighborhood would remain in the Windsor Knowles Feeder District. And the kids would continue to stay with the lifelong friends that they have made from elementary, moving into middle, and so forth. Even though we currently attend Twin Ridge, which is as an out-of-district transfer, if my daughter attended Green Valley regardless, she would still be in the same position she's in today, moving to a new school, knowing nobody there. And from my understanding, even though she has been attending Little, Tra Little Traveler since she was four years old, they will only have a bus service from Windsor Knowles beginning next year. With those changes, and unless you're willing to approve for out of district due to childcare, my family will also have to look for a new after school program for our, for our daughter, which will be more expensive than where we're currently adding an additional financial burden to our family. With all of this being said, I'm asking you to reconsider the soup the superintendent's recommendation and keep our neighborhood going to Windsor Knowles so my daughter and our neighborhood can continue with all of their lifelong friends. Thank you for your time and consideration. Thank you. Isabella? Okay, thank you. Hi, I'm back. In case you forgot, I'm Isabella Engler from Twin Ridge Elementary School. And yes, I'm here to talk to you about the redistricting. When we last spoke, I talked about how the changes would impact me and my friends. Now I want to speak think about the 68 kids in our neighborhood that will also suffer and feel the difference. So it's not just about friendships, but it's also about the safety we feel knowing that staff or having friends fare with us. All of us, whether we are attending Twin Ridge or Green Valley currently, are going to be shipped off to a, a school where we know no one, and which makes us feel alone. In addition, I have participated in our choir since I began attending Twin Ridge Elementary. And knowing that by going to Windsor Knowles, I would be able to continue singing after school with Ms. Gerhardt, who donates her personal time by the way, to establish a course that made me feel extremely happy and safe about my middle school transition. Choir is very important to me, and since that's not an option at Newmarket Middle School, it'll be just one more thing that I'm losing. To me, choir is how I express myself, and this is another de devastating loss for me. I can go on and on about why I think the study has not taken everything into consideration, but I'm asking you to please listen to us. Take our reasons and really listen and consider them. We are not asking for a lot. We just want to feel safe and confident as we transition into middle school. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Isabella, and I think you did an excellent job of expressing yourself. Michael Blum. Hi, I'm Michael Bloom. I'm from the same neighborhood here to discuss um, uh, the superintendent's proposed plan for planning blocks 54 um, and now 187. Uh, it was mentioned that there were some proposals in, in March that had three different options and then in May that had two different options didn't feel the need to speak up at that point because our neighborhood was still in, in the Windsor Knowles and the Green Valley Elementary School. Um, then at some point we were added to the to the proposal and now I feel the need to step up because it's an unnatural 
block between the, the barrier of I-70, an um, established neighborhood that's been there for years, seems to be split in half here. The planning blocks 54 was split on the, the proposal um, that was only in a table format where planning block 187 was only presented to the public on August 26th. It was not in any of the maps, although the layers of the planning blocks were there, this seemed to be added in at a later date. And almost under the radar, we are now seeing data from planning block 54 just merged with 187. And that does not seem like Cooper, uh, Cropper GIS had ample time to analyze this data and give us the, the actual recommendations that were presented to the public. So at this point, I'm questioning why the board did not go with any of the Cropper GIS recommendations that met the numbers for all of the different areas that are affected by this. And also, proximity-wise, uh, it was mentioned that there's an area down here right below New Market Middle School that's closer in proximity that has not been included in the New Market Middle School area for the proposed plan. I'd, I'd recommend that you consider adding that instead of this established neighborhood. Um, and and those, those numbers are planning block 57 that, in my, in my opinion, I think should be added to that. Um, I will make a statement that myself and another parent volunteer for Green Valley Ent Elementary School has volunteered for the last three years for an after-school program there called Destination Imagination. And it allows for the students to give solutions completely based on their, their own ideas. No, no adult interaction or solutions are provided. We have to step back and only provide safety. With the proposed plan, both of the volunteers are being moved from Green Valley Elementary School to the Twin Ridge Elementary School, leaving no seasoned volunteers there whatsoever. Um, my fear is that it's going to be tough to rebuild in a new school, um, and, and, and I'd request that consideration be made just this, this 187 and Planning Block 54 be included in the Green Valley Elementary School and the Windsor Knowles districts because of the fact that it's leaving a void in the area of the Destination Imagination Program. Thank you. Thank you. Next will be Jennifer Leonard, followed by Virginia Smith and Patrick Morgan. Good evening. My name is Jennifer Leonard, and I'm the parent of two boys who currently attend Windsor Knowles Middle School, one in sixth grade, one in seventh grade. I'm here on behalf of my children, as well as the Lee Hill, Linganore Woods, Tall Oaks community. We are now in the 11th hour of this redistricting process, and it is only now that our neighborhood has been slated to switch both elementary and middle schools. It's unfair that our neighborhood hasn't been afforded the same courtesy of having time to process the new proposal as the neighborhoods affected in previous phases. This was a change that was not included in either option A or option B that were presented in June. In fact, Cropper GIS, the redistricting consultant, did not recommend this current redistricting proposal. On maps available as of September 14th of this year, our community was still part of a split planning block labeled as Planning Block 54. Since then, our portion of the neighborhood has now been relabeled as Planning Block 187. According to Board of Ed statement, this renaming of planning blocks happened some time ago, but the maps were never updated. This doesn't seem to be consistent with the transparent process claimed by FCPS. The planning blocks appear to have been adjusted after the redistricting process started. Now, we are facing a Board of Ed decision that could potentially significantly <coughs> impact our families in less than a month, whereas the previous proposals were followed by months of comments, feedback, and surveys. This entire process is a direct result of neighborhoods being built without regard to the infrastructure needed to sustain them. It makes sense to redistrict in the specific areas of issue and overgrowth. We in Lee Hill, Linganore Woods, Tall Oaks are a fully developed neighborhood. Our house and neighborhood in particular was built in the late 70s, early 80s. With regard to our surrounding areas, FC Frederick has purchased the land on Bartholos Road and started construction of their soccer complex, so there's obviously not gonna be additional housing built there. At the middle school level in our neighborhood comprised of Planning Block 59 and Planning Block 187, we're looking at 25 children. The number of students who'll be affected in our area will fit on one school bus and are currently on one school bus route. I can't express to you how detrimental it is for a student to change schools, particularly 
in middle school. As a social worker working in foster care and adoptions for many years, the research that has been done on the damaged children who undergo multiple moves, whether it's school, home, et cetera, is extensive. School moves, particularly in middle school, frequently result in emotional, social, and academic issues for children. According to the superintendent's report, the estimated enrollment for 2018-2019 at Windsor Knowles is 748, with the estimated enrollment under the superintendent's recommendation going to 676. For Newmarket Middle School, the estimated enrollment for 2018-2019 is 556, with the estimated enrollment under the superintendent's recommendation at 626. The utilization capacity numbers are striking and should be considered as evidence against redistricting our neighborhood students to Newmarket. The Windsor Knowles capacity for 2018-2019 is 83%. Under the new recommendation, that number drops to 70%. For Newmarket, the capacity for 2018-2019 is 75%. Under this recommendation, that number jumps to 92%. Thus, moving our children from a school with a reasonable utilization capacity to one that is almost at the max. This doesn't make sense given the Board of Ed claim that the redistricting is to balance enrollments. And again, this new proposal was not recommended by the consulting form, firm. A more reasonable recommendation would be to use 70 as a natural geographic boundary and keep planning blocks south of 70 as Windsor Knolls. As proposed, the superintendent's recommendation creates isolated islands within the communities affected. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, my name is Virginia Smith. I'm actually here speaking for my sister who is at work she also lives in the Linganore Woods area. My niece will be in eighth grade next year, um, a big year, detrimental year to switch schools and then switch again to go on to high school. And again, they weren't aware of this in June when the, it came out originally that this was even considered. Um, my niece has made great gains at Windsor Knowles. Um, over the past two years, she went to Green, Va Green Valley. She's um, had, had some struggles in school and this year things are really starting to click. Then to ask her to move on next year to a new middle school where she doesn't know anybody. None of her friends are going there, not one of them. So it's a big change. So I, my sister and I are very concerned and how you're not allowing just even the eighth graders to finish up at Windsor Knowles. It's one more year. There's big events, there's the dance, there's the trip to DC. And their neighborhood is established. No, there are no houses being built. We know that overdevelopment is occurring and it's been occurring, so I'm not sure why it's being decided now. When that started, then you should have said in sixth grade, maybe this neighborhood starts in a new middle school instead of starting them where, you know, they would become familiar with everybody to switch them two years later and then switch again to go into Linganore. So I'm asking that you consider all these eighth grade students and all the students in this neighborhood, it's a small number, and let them stay at Green Valley and let them stay at Windsor Knowles instead of busing them up the road to Newmarket when there's other neighborhoods in between. Thank you. Hi, good evening. Uh, my name is Patrick Morgan. Um, like many people here, um, I haven't been involved in this process as much because option A and option B did not impact our family. And as of the 11th, suddenly, you know, we, we are now part of this potential change. Um, I'm speaking to you both as a teacher uh, and as a parent. Um, as a parent, we live on Westwood Drive. There's a natural divider of Gas House Pike that has been utilized for many years to separate Oakdale from Linganore. Um, beside us is Dance Hall Road. All those students will remain at Linganore. Behind us will remain at Linganore. Um, and for whatever reason, recently, we have joined over to the Oakdale side of things. Um, there are 12 homes in our neighborhood, so it is a fully developed neighborhood. It was built in the 70s. There is no more growth coming there. There is currently eight children that live there, four of which are mine, um, who love Linganore. Uh, there's 50 years of pride and tradition in that neighborhood of Linganore. Our neighbors um, raised five children. Um, they have grandchildren that go there. They are the parents who have been to every youth league game the whole way up because um, their children decided to really pursue sports. Um, as a teacher, when I, when I think about those things, um, I've been doing this 24 years now and I love FCPS and I'm proud to say that I spent my career here. Um, when I've seen children move at the high school level, seeing how incredibly difficult that can be, um, we know as educators and as families that that 
connection is so pivotal to success in high school, be it theater, band, drama, sports, whatever path the child may choose, we always encourage them to follow their passion. A move disrupts those connections. So academically, there can be some trouble, you know, some difficulty with, with that, but the social connections in particular can really be a challenge. You're essentially asking a child, and I've seen many children struggle with this in my time as a teacher, they now had multiple things, they were connected with the school. They now have to be in a new environment, they now have to make new friends, they have to make new teammates. Those things often will be a hindrance and children will often step away from those things. And it breaks my heart when I see children who come to school at 7.30 and they leave right at 2.15 every day and they never go beyond that extracurricular part of the day which is so important and so vital for them. Um, we certainly teach acceptance of you know, people at the school. We want everyone to feel like family. In reality, that can be really hard due to different social situations. Um, I know my two freshmen now at Linganore adore this school. They want to be um, part of Project Lead the Way, and they are already anchored in the school. My son mentioned to me the other day that he felt like he had a teacher who could write him a letter of recommendation. You know, that's something really special to me. We're in the third week of school, and he feels like he has that relationship already here, and that's really powerful, and it means a lot to us as a family. Um, I have no doubt that my children will receive a great education anywhere in FCPS. My concern comes down to a move that is unnecessary and impacts, you know, our 12 children, or our four children are barely moving the radar there. I ask that you're able to consider that and at least grant out of district waivers as possible for current high school students. Thank you. Thank you. Next will be Renee Mills, Jenny Hogg, and Angela Moxley. Good evening, my name is Renee Mills. Um, this is my son Joshua who currently attends Windsor Knowles Middle School as a brand new sixth grader there. We currently reside at Old Bartholow's Road. We're part of Planning Block 187, as many of the fellow community members here this evening. My uh, husband attended Green Valley Elementary in Windsor Knowles Middle School. My daughter attended Green Valley Elementary, Windsor Knowles Middle School, and is currently a junior here at Linganore High School. My son attended Green Valley Elementary and is a sixth grader at Windsor Knowles, and my niece is currently a second grader at Green Valley Elementary. We are an established community that's been around for decades. We chose our home uh, about 10 years ago to have our children um, attend those schools like many people, you know, did. they do. That's what they look for. Based on the new recommendation put forth by the superintendent and her office, um, we are now redistricted. And again, like many have said this evening in, in the community, um, I've done my due diligence. I followed all the maps for months and months. We were never affected. Then I feel almost um, that we were not given the proper or same amount of time as others um, because we weren't affected. The recent um, recommendations and edits that were made to this plan now redistrict us to Twin Ridge and New Market Middle School. But they only redistrict half of our community. If you go farther up our road or Barth where Old Bartholos turns into Lindbergh, it will remain at Green Valley Elementary in Windsor Knowles. Our community is now split. And this is all due to a new community like those have has also said of Lansdale. I feel that more time and consideration should be given to a, a new community being redistricted into new schools versus an established community. Our children will now be forced to go to other schools. And again, I'm not worried about any of the education they will receive. All of the schools in our community are fantastic. What I am concerned about is that not enough time was actually given to the edits made to this final proposed plan. On Hungerford Manor Court, if you actually look at the boundary line between P54 and 187, it was drawn directly through a cul-de-sac. It splits four homes. I think that this final plan is not ready for approval and needs to be given the same amount of time and community feedback allowed over you know, to actually be set forth whether, that's, whether this is the correct thing to do. I believe a better map can be redistricted following the National Ge um, Geographic of 70, as all, you know, fellow community members have already listed. Um, there are better options, and I don't think enough time and consideration was actually given to this final edits that were made that was not recommended um, by the company Cropper GIS that did the studies. I feel that enough time and money has been invested to make the best decision for all the communities and keeping them separate, or, or keeping them together, sorry. Um, I don't see why um, more time and actually looking at this final plan and how it affects cannot be given at this time. 
And as a community of Green Valley, we have also um, started a petition, which we were uh, presenting to the board beginning of October, based on these facts. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Good evening, my name is Jenny Hogue. Dr. Albin and members of the board, thank you for the opportunity to speak tonight. In January, before kindergarten registration opened for the 2019-2020 school year, the LOU redistricting study was announced. At that time, my son was a rising kindergarten student, and since we're new to the school system, I took the time to read the information that was available. Over the past several months, a total of five ma maps have been presented, each one showing that my neighborhood, Bradford Estates off of Bartholos Road, or what was planning Block 55, would remain in the Green Valley, Windsor Knolls, Linganore feeder pattern. On Friday, September 6th, my neighbors and I were surprised to find out that based on the superintendent's recommendation, we are now possibly being redistricted to the Twin Ridge, New Market, Linganore feeder pattern. Because our neighborhood was never marked on any of the maps as having the potential to be affected, my neighbors and I feel that we have never been included in the process. It's hard to have a voice when the change was unexpected. For many of the families in our neighborhood, this change now presents an issue with after-school care. For example, my husband and I work full-time jobs and we have no immediate family in the area. So our son currently attends Bar T for after-school care. Bar T provides transportation from Green Valley to their facility in Urbana, but if we are redistricted to Twin Ridge, we will lose the opportunity for our son to attend an after-school program that meets our family's needs. Extended hours, open on days when FC FCPS schools are closed, and an environment that continues his learning and fosters his love of the outdoors. My son is an active five and a half year old who loves sports, trying new things, and being outside, and Bar T gives him every opportunity to do those things. Just this week, he tried street hockey on Monday, went on a hike on Tuesday, and tomorrow he'll be participating in their derby races in honor of the Great Frederick Fair. While there are other after-school options in the area, none of them provide similar opportunities. I know this process is quite the undertaking, and I ask that you please consider how this one seemingly little change affects the family's choice for after-school care that meets their needs. As I mentioned before, my son started kindergarten this year. Shortly after the first day, his um, school notified all kindergarten parents that another class was being added to our school and a new teacher will be reporting on Monday, September 23rd. My son was selected to transition to the new class next week, just three weeks after he started kindergarten. Based on the proposed plan, he is expected to experience more changes, a new elementary school in his second year of school, and attending a middle school with a small group of friends because our neighborhood is surrounded by others who will be attending Windsor Knowles. We all know that change is inevitable, but too much change can have a lasting effect. To close, I hope that you will take, this, take into consideration what the change to our neighborhood will do to families after school care, as well as what effect too much change will have on our younger students. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Good evening. Um, my name is Angela Moxley, and I live on Woodville Road, north of Mount Airy. Um, I'm the parent of a first grader, as well as a future student at Twin Ridge Elementary School. And we are part of the group north of Mount Airy that will be split off and sent to New Market Middle School. And I'm actually here to offer support for the staff and the option that has been put forward for our planning block. Um, although my individual children will be affected by the redistricting change and um, split from some of their friends, I am trying to think in broader terms of the option that will best serve the entire community. Um, I know that it may be a difficult transition for them to move away from some of their friends, but learning to deal with struggles is a reality of life and a good skill to learn from a young age. And I'm also thinking um, in terms of their social development and how learning to meet new people, make new relationships, and adapt to new environments is something that will benefit them in the workplace and throughout their lives. Um, and I also recognize that there are other children in our, in our school system throughout the county who undoubtedly face much greater challenges. And finally, Windsor Knowles Middle School is not part of the Linganore feeder pattern, so um, the children would be split from their friends at some point anyway down the road, even if the change that we were discussing tonight were not to occur. Um, I fully appreciate that the Board of Education did not approve all of the new development, and yet the BOE and the staff are charged with absorbing all the impacts, and that 
the reality of redistricting is that students get shifted around and you have a pretty much impossible balancing act. Um, so I appreciate all the work that has, that has been put into this and all the thought. Um, no option is going to be ideal for anyone and I'm okay with that. Thank you. Thank you. Next will be Leah Reisman, Sarah Ferrari, and John Stefula. Good evening, my name is Leah Reisman. And we too have been impacted, in fact I'm gonna say blindsided by the new proposed changes. We're in the West Oakfield development, which is now included in the redistricting consideration. And it saddens me that the Board of Education and our superintendent are having to focus their time in, on redistricting rather than other educational issues for students. I wish our county could plan for schools before development rather than after. So I'd like to share how the superintendent's proposed changes to the redistricting is going to affect our family, as I'm sure many of our neighbors are in the similar, if not the same situations. We've been in our current house for 18 years now, and with these new proposed changes, this would be the second time our neighborhood has been redistricted since we've lived there. We currently have a daughter, we have three daughters, but the one that will be impacted, she's attending Windsor Knowles Middle School, she would be transferred to New Market Elementary School. She'll be in the eighth grade next year. And we have multiple concerns about this, so I'd like to point out a few of them. She is in the band. She's been in the band sixth grade. She's been in the band now in seventh grade. If she gets transferred to New Market Middle School, I don't think she'll continue with the band. She loves her band director. She loves all the students who are there. I don't, I don't think she's going to continue with it, to be very honest with you. She also plays on the Winter, Windsor Knowles Middle School basketball team. She played last year in sixth grade. She's gonna play again this year. Or at least I'm pretty confident she's going to. We spend a lot of time and money on her training throughout the year for her to play on this team. If she gets transferred to New Market Middle School, I'm not sure if she's gonna make that team, not because of her ability, but because it's gonna be an established team in eighth grade. And if she does make the team, I'm not sure she's gonna get much playing time that she's earned on her own team. Finally, I'd like to talk about Girl Scouts. She and I are members of Girl Scout Troop 81265. It's a seventh grade Windsor Knoll Girl Scout Troop. We've been with this troop since kindergarten. If we are transferred to New Market Middle School, she, we are able to stay with this Girl Scout Troop. But socially, I think we're gonna continue, we will consider, if this happens, her going to a different troop at New Market Middle because she doesn't know anybody there. She needs to make new friends. If she goes, I go. I'm the troop leader. leader for 81265 at Windsor Knowles Middle School. And I've been doing this since they were in kindergarten. If I leave the troop, this is also a different service unit, so I'm also leaving our service unit. If nobody steps up to take over my demanding volunteer troop leader position, the troop will be disbanded. We're talking about 12 girls that have been in this for many years. We do a lot of community service. I've heard about the grandfathering that's being offered to the high school juniors and seniors, but they'll have to provide their own transportation. Many, although I'd like you to consider providing transportation to eighth graders, juniors, and seniors. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, I'm Sarah Ferrari. Thanks for the opportunity to speak uh, to you tonight. Uh, my comments regard the West Oak Fields um, Molesworth neighborhood. And there's three points that I um, wish to make. One regarding the redistricting process, the second regarding the proposed elementary middle school disconnect for that, um, that would impact that neighborhood. And the third would be concerns regarding additional impact um, of the new Lansdale development once their schools start being built, which is not all that far off uh, if you have young children. Um, so regarding the process, there's been you know, three rounds of hearings, extensive communications, and this um, disconnect between the elementary and middle school uh, was not part of any of those. So um, I, I'm just concerned that this proposal might not be properly vetted. So I do appreciate having the hearing tonight. Um, regarding the disconnect, uh, West Oak Fields, it's an established neighborhood. Um, people have been there for years and years, multiple decades, 30, 40 years, some of the people in the neighborhood. Um, we're a community of 
community boosters and builders, and uh, we seek long-term community and friendships for quality of life. That's the kind of neighborhood it is, right? And we hope the same for our children. So the proposal has our small number of children going from Twin Ridge to Newmarket Middle School while all of their classmates will go to Windsor Knolls. Um, I'm not opposed to change, but if there must be a change, can we at least keep the, um, you know, go Twin Ridge to Windsor Knolls with all their classmates or start in Newmarket uh, Elementary to Newmarket Middle with their classmates. Um, and thank you for keeping it Linganore at least because they start very early in elementary school already um, identifying with their high school through sports. Um, if there has to be a discontinuity, Lansdale is planned transient community of townhomes uh, the majority of residents there are either planning to move into single-family homes or they're um, planning to relocate at some point for their next job assignment. So with the nature of that planned transients, that might be a better neighborhood if there has to be some um, creative districting, shall we say. Um, I'm concerned about, uh, well, Lansdale's definitely going to be affected when their new um, school opens. Um, I haven't seen any communications, maybe it's too early, but I'm wondering if there's a way to make adjustments now that would make it easier at that time uh, when the school opens. Maybe um, if Lansdale was somewhat dispersed, so when they all started going to their own elementary, we wouldn't have to do a whole redistricting again. Um, but again, I, I don't know your process. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Good evening. I'm John Cifullo. Can you hear me? Okay. I'd like to thank the board for the time to come out here. Uh, just to echo the sentiments of the folks here, uh, the pr presentation that was given to us back in June seemed to uh, lay out a, several different plans. It's not one now being presented. When looking at the material online, one of the things I asked uh, Cooper uh, Cropper GIS was, what is the criteria making the decision? And so there is a Frederick County Public Schools Policy 200-2. When you're trying to find that, it was a little hard to do it. What I didn't see was a comparison between the two boundaries, laying out those criteria that would be transparent to everybody to see, because we understand there's going to be affected by it, but there is no way to really determine other than looking at a map and really trying to figure it out. So I would suggest that if you do in the future, lay out the criteria that's really driving the decision so when the board makes it. Second suggestion I would give up is it seems like this should be phased in over time, not a, stri a strict timeline of one time here we're going to do it and just make the change. Because the cohort classes I think would be, would address all the sentiments everybody feels here of trying to keep the cohorts together over time. Because that seems to be a limiting factor when we look at everything. Everything seems to be done like in a two year, not maybe phased over two or three or four years. It might give the board more options. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much. And we have Christine Clark. Good evening. I'm a parent of a freshman at Urbana High School currently. Uh, I live in the Lansdale neighborhood. And the reason I moved to the neighborhood was in order for my daughter to go to Urbana High School. But now she has to change over to come to Leganor, which the proximity to her school is, is a little bit far. If she has to go into her sophomore or senior year and she's gonna be driving, I take into consideration the time of early in the morning, her commute during the winter season. And also, she's also a member of her school Olympics um, team, how is that gonna affect her when she has to come over to a new school? Another consideration that I had, I know some people say it's a transit community, but I think a lot of people decided to move into that neighborhood because it's a, Urbana is a nice neighborhood to move into. I wouldn't consider it a, tr a transit community. And what I recommend is to grant students that would like to stay in their neighborhood to go to a school that's closer to where they stay instead of having to travel 15, 20 minutes away. Thank you. Thank you. Those were 
the only people we had signed up. Is there anyone else in the audience who would like to speak? If you would state your name when you come up, please. Thank you. I was a little late. I uh, couldn't sign. My name is Giuliana Gerardi, and I live in uh, Block 57, the Lansdale community that has been named <laughs> a lot this evening. Um, it is a new community, and it is a big community, already big, and will be probably double the size of what it is right now. So we understand that it makes a huge impact on the numbers, on the report. Now, I'm, I tried today to write something, have something prepared, and um, I went also to the other earrings in Ur Urbana High School a couple of nights ago, because I'm very interested to listen to the story of the people. Those reports are very, very interesting, and they are projection, and it seems everything, okay, works out in the numbers, but those numbers are people and family. The reason why family with children move into a place is because 90% of the time of the feeder pattern that that particular location has. I moved just a year ago, and I don't plan to move again unless something happened. So I don't feel that I'm in a transit community. I don't feel neither to suggest, oh, this other neighbor should move here or should move there. Because every one of us, and I sympathize with everybody, has chosen a place to live based on feeder pattern and based on proximity to school. My particular story is I moved in 2018, December 2018, at the end of December, with a lot of excitement, and three weeks later, the redistricting study came up. On the first three proposition, Lansdale was planned uh, to be moved only on one of them. And then on the, on the two proposition that were presented, I think, in March or in June, I don't remember exactly, then on both proposition, Lansdale was planned to move. What I'm here to say is we, we are all understanding the development, the overdevelopment, and all these things that are happening in this area. Redistricting has been happened already before and will happen again. Because even if we look at the numbers, uh, Urbana will be a capacity to probably a year after the, the new redistricting is, is going to happen. So I think it's fair at this point with the history of redistricting that has been going on, that the, the Board of Education decided in advance when the new communities are planned, where they're going to be feeding into, so that people are aware or where they're going to live and make choices. Just to finish, since there's nobody else after me, I take a little second more. We have another oh, person. Sorry. I, I just want to ask, the next two years is not going to change much on this capacity, so why don't this plan is laid out, people is list, uh, the communication and the feedback from the people is listened, and then in some occasion, and, and, and then it takes place after one new resident will have the full information and will be deciding where to live, because the, what is impacting the most is the, the big development, the new community that are developing right now. Thank you. And we would like to have a choice at this point if we can stay in our final planet or not. Thank you. My name is Eric Remsas. I am part of the Kemptown Elementary School family. Um, I've met many of you at many board meetings over the past several months and throughout this entire process. And I really just want to say thank you for taking the time to listen to the parents from all of the communities, whether it's Urbana, Oakdale, Linganor, their feeder patterns, every community that's affected by this redistricting. And I want to say thank you to the parents that come out and advocate for their kids and for their communities. 
and that point out errors in the map or where communities are split. That's a huge deal. That's how you get changes made. I also want to recommend something as a parent to the board. I think you should be involved in this process when we do it again because to be realistic, we are going to do this again in the near seven to ten year future with the current status of building and school sizes. I think you should be involved from the beginning. I think you guys should be at the proper GIS or whatever company you hire at the times proposed meeting so that you can hear the outcry from the community throughout all of the stages to garner what each move is for the board. I know that um, Paul Lebo and Beth in the back have been a great sounding board for that to you guys, but I think as the voting members, you should also hear it for yourselves. Um, I also think you should stay on top of paperwork. Brad Young made a comment at the Urbana meeting that he hadn't seen the, you guys hadn't seen the plans um, until September 11th, but Ms. Ms. Barrett and Ms. Schaefer both said that they'd had time to review them. The public had them on the 6th, so I think that it was very in poor taste to not come to the September 11th meeting prepared and aware of what some of the recommendations would have been. And had you been more involved in the beginning phases, maybe you would have known where the hot spots were, not just through the emails and the board appearances that people made. So I think when we do this in the future, that's one of, as a parent and of three kids in FCPS, I think it would be really nice to see all of you throughout the entire process, not just listening to us at the end. So that's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you very much. So Board President Young asked me to be sure to convey to all of you that the process is not over, the decision is not a done deal. As Mr. Lebo stated at the beginning of the meeting, the board will have another public hearing on Tuesday night at Oakdale High School. And then next Wednesday, they will be talking about the feedback they have heard, the current plan. They will probably, most definitely, send questions to staff based on things that they have heard from you um, tonight and in previous nights. So that meeting is a work session. That will be a roll up your sleeves, take a look at it. How does the feedback we've heard make us think about this? What are some options? So for those of you who have said you've been engaged from the beginning, stay engaged. That's gonna be a very important meeting to watch and listen to. And from that meeting, they will give direction to staff and it was deliberate in that they wouldn't take action until the following meeting. So you will hear their direction to staff on September 25th, and you will still have time to give them feedback before they vote on October 16th through email or public comment, okay? So I want you to realize that hopefully you have seen throughout the process that feedback is being used to make revisions and, and to try to work things through. And I know that the board will pay careful attention to the feedback that you have all given and that that will play into their discussion next week. And then I will also share the comment that Board President Young always starts and ends with. This is one of the hardest things the board has to do. It is a very emotional decision. It is a very hard decision. And they go into it recognizing that any decision they make, there are gonna be some people who will not like it and be unhappy, and they will do their best to make the best decision possible for the students of Frederick County Public Schools, and I know they are all committed to that. So we thank you very much for joining us this evening, and this meeting is now adjourned.